Okay, good to see everybody. Good to be back. You know, I was thinking uh, coming in here today, you know, back, back when I was a head coach um, on Sundays, I used to send out this little newsletter on Sunday nights to constituents and so on. And that was sort of my method to officially flush the last game, uh, good, bad, or ugly. And, and of course, at, at this level, uh, Shane has media commitments on Sunday nights and pretty much every day of the week, I'm sure. But um, so that's as a head coach, you know, you get a chance to kind of move on um, as, as you get your uh, get your thoughts out there as coordinators, you know, we've got to wait till Wednesday to, to come see you. Um, and, and of course we've moved on, we're deep into a new week of preparation, but, um, obviously, you know, you want to address what happened and it, and it certainly was, a, uh, a, a disappointing loss, um, in, in many ways. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, feeling like you're right there and, and, uh, about to do something pretty meaningful. Um, I say this all the time, but I think it's it's really true, and and that is that every year is different, every team is different, every season is different, the way things play out is different. That's just football, um, and um, and and certainly, you know, with this group, we're still uh, working really hard to try to put together 60 minutes of of truly complementary football in all three phases, and uh, and I believe we will soon. I really do. Um, you know, from my standpoint, though, um, you know, when, when you've had some, some tough losses, including Saturday, um, that's not a time to uh, start to, you know, make radical changes. I think to, to the contrary, um, you know, you, you really have to stick to uh, the core of what you're doing and, and uh, the fundamentals um, and, and – you know, your beliefs in, in what your team can do. Um, so to me, um, I, I don't really change a whole lot. Um, you know, I'm not going to come out this week and, you know, reinvent the wheel or something just because we had a, we had a tough loss the other night. You know, to me, it's more about being the same guy every day. And, uh, you know, I, I show the kids a slide at the beginning of the year in the first special teams meeting and, it has all the opponents up there, and I said, "Listen, I'm going to be the same uh, madman running around out there on the field for a half hour a day that we do special teams work. If we're getting ready for Furman, or we're getting ready for the national champions, or Eastern Illinois, or it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to try to be consistent uh, with who I am and 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 how we approach things. And and the hope is that the players respond to that, um, and, and that they're trying to." to do the same thing. Now, week to week, things are going to change. You're going to look at an opponent. You're going to uh, attack that opponent uh, in, in different ways and so forth. But, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the guy that uh, believes in, in dancing with the girl that you brought to the prom, right? I'm not going to come in here today and, you know, oh, I'm going to use some just for men in my hair today and get rid of all the grays or something. Or, you know, I'm not going to start, like, doing some – voodoo or something like that right so so uh you know you, you you stick to what you believe and and what got you here now um that being said um you know we're getting ready for a, a very good football team this week and uh a team in my mind that you know, obviously is having a great season so far um with the, with the games they've won and the close games they've won and, and the record they've accumulated but i think when you really look at them uh, and now getting to know them over the course of three years, I think their personnel is improving. Um, I think they know how to play complementary football. Uh, you could see there's a there's a bigger picture plan there, and there's a cohesiveness uh, between all three phases. Uh, and you also see that they are getting bolder, uh, getting more aggressive on special teams this year. There's been um, certain things that they've done. Um, that maybe in the past they they would not have been uh, as adventurous. Uh, they've they've had a, a surprise onside kick this year. They've thrown a fake punt for a touchdown. They've returned uh, a long field goal. They put a returner back there and and created a return out of it uh, earlier in the season. 
Um, you know, they've, they've started doing muddle huddle this year, which is something that, that you would not have seen them done in the past. And, and they're going after more punts where in the past they might have been a little bit more conservative. So um, you can see their confidence is growing and, and along with that, because when, when you get really aggressive on special teams, you're saying that you might put your defense in some bad spots. And um, I think they're, they're showing a, a willingness to take those chances this year. So from our end, that gives you uh, more to prepare for. So, um, so it's, it's a challenging week uh, from a preparation standpoint, but, but uh, I'm excited about the challenge. Uh, I do think they've got some really good specialists. Uh, their kicker, Mevis, who I'm very familiar with. I went and saw him kick in high school up in northwest Indiana, up in that Gary area. Um, he's got a big-time leg. He's hit some record-long type field goals. He's also handling the kickoff duties for them this year. They've played two punters. Uh, they seem to have settled on an American, of all things, this, this week. Uh, he's taken over the duties. A guy named Bauer, number 93 for them. And he can angle punt, he can rugby punt. Um, he's having a good season so far in the last three, four games that he's played in. Uh, and then Luther Burden, of course, I was nervous about this guy last year just because he's so darn aggressive back there with punts. It doesn't matter if the punt's coming down on the three yard line. It doesn't matter if the punt's rolling on the ground. Um, this guy is, is gonna be super aggressive and uh, you see his confidence at receiver. You see his confidence at punt returner, and um, he's averaging like 12 yards per return in his career. They've used a bunch of different kick returners. The guy that they seem to have uh, settled on or maybe just used most recently, uh, Marquise Johnson, number 17, uh, played well against Kentucky last week, and uh, he's also the guy that caught the fake punt uh, from the punter for a touchdown last week against Kentucky. So. You can tell he's another guy that's got some some confidence and some swag about him. So big challenge uh, those guys present for our coverage units and um, and, and really hoping that uh, we can generate something with our return units. You know, we, we had another chance last week uh, for a, what I thought was going to be a big kickoff return, and, and we were one block away from that. So that's been uh, somewhat frustrating for me, but we're going to, again, stay the course and, and keep – keep doing the things that, that we know um, have worked and, and will get us eventually to where we want to go. And i got to keep figuring out who the right mix of guys are and, and uh, continue to try to bring along some of these younger players. Pete, a couple for you. Is um, that an NYU shirt? Yeah. How about that? It's not bad, the, right? Very nice. It's a very good place to visit. No football program, though, unfortunately. Uh, no, maybe was it pre-World War II? They probably played football pre-World War II. I'll have to do In my spare time, I'll do some I'll, history on that. I'll look you. that up for you, okay. too. Um, a couple for you. One, the, the pooch kick to start the game. Uh, was that intended? And the second, Kai is a guy that you always trust. He had such yeah. a fantastic year. He had a couple of mishit punts. Just, he absolutely did. How, how do you handle that with a guy yes. who's been there and, and, and might be struggling some? Yeah. No, it's two good questions. No, the, the, the first kick, um, Mitch just didn't get all of it, and uh, he was kicking into the wind at that point. So that one didn't quite carry uh, as long as we wanted it to. But, and we tell our guys every single guy at the time they go out there, like, you got to be ready to cover a kick. Like, you can never assume that it's going to be a touchback. You can never assume it's going to be a fair catch. And the truth is, on that one, we missed three tackles. Um, we had a chance to get that guy down well inside the 25-yard line. He had to back up to catch it, so the timing was off. Uh, the guy that he was responsible to block came clean and made the first hit, missed. We had another guy come clean on a twist um, and, and bounced off him. Um, and then a couple other guys you know, added themselves on but, but uh, didn't, didn't stop the vertical charge of the return. So I was uh, – I was disappointed more in how we covered that kick than, than the kick itself. Um, relative to Kai, um, you know, he's been inconsistent with his drops. And we have spent more practice time here in recent weeks uh, addressing that. Um, you know, some, some times in practice where maybe you're trying to get him a little bit more rest. Um, and you just don't want him out there just banging more punts because that's not always the answer. And, you know, your leg is dragging by, by Saturday. But we have been trying to put some more time into just basic technique, 
um, and, and some drills um, to try to improve the consistency of his drops. Um, so th there's no question about it. I mean, you got uh, a guy that was all conference and, uh, you know, received a bunch of different accolades. And when you, when you talk about a play here and a play there and, and your best players stepping up at critical times, you know, that includes a specialist, right? You, you know, you, I don't care what level of college football you're playing at. It's no different in the SEC. And, you know, I coached at Division Three Hamden Sydney College. My standards, my expectations don't change. Like, you've got a job to do. You've got to go out there and do it. You've got to do it to the best of your ability. And you certainly got to do it um, in, in those high-pressure situations. And, uh, and that was a, the, the last punt of the game. We weren't even pressured, you know. So it's not like there were eight guys breathing down his neck at that point. So uh, he knows he's got to improve. Um, he, he's, a, he's a dude, right? That's, that's a guy right there that you, you want in the foxhole with you. So I'm not worried about his confidence or anything else. Um, you know, the first punt of the game that he had the other day was his best punt of the year. So uh, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be just fine. And, uh, um, you know, he's, he's trying to um, address some of the things that have uh, perhaps caused some of these inconsistencies. Uh, in my you shut down their football program in 1952. Uh, so there they you go. Play, they, they, they survived World War II. They played at Yankee Stadium. They played all over, apparently. So. so right about the same time, the Georgetown Hoyas shut down. I think that was 1950. Mm. And then they brought it back as club football in the late 60s and then went Division Three in 1970. Uh, my coach, God rest his soul, Scotty Glacken, coached right up through my senior year, one more year after that, I think. And uh, so there were a lot of teams that were sort of in that, in that situation. Hoyas fortunately brought it back, had a big win over another former team of mine, the Lehigh Mountain Hawks, the other day, my first head coaching job. So anytime Georgetown and Lehigh clash on the gridiron, I'm always somewhat torn. You know? um, as far as this football team, uh, the, uh, the block field goal, how, I guess what led to that, what, what – Played into y'all being able to get a piece, and, and yeah. I guess how satisfying yeah. was it to very, very satisfying. Um, that was a game going in. You know, we got one against Florida last year, off the edge, and um, and we were um, optimistic that we might have a shot at another one going into this game. And let me just say this: when it comes to blocking kicks and blocking punts, uh, one of my coaching mantras that I've probably worn out. Uh, over the years is that every play is its own entity. And what we tell the field goal block unit is this. There were nine kicks uh, in that game the other day by Florida. One of them was low. But on the one that was low, we got penetration and we got a hand on the flight line of the ball and we blocked it. And that was Tyreek Johnson who has a knack for doing that. Um, if you don't go hard every play and you don't put yourself in position to perhaps block a kick on every play, then when that low one comes, it's still gonna, gonna sail through the uprights, right? So that to me is the, is the lesson in all that. You have to go hard every time. You have to um, look at every single play as its own entity. How, if you got blocked on the last one, you might not get blocked on this one. Um, you know, maybe that guy across from you screws up and that creates just enough space for you to get through there. So. Um, so uh, that was encouraging to see, and, and there was some good things to build on right there, and, and hopefully some bigger picture lessons along with that as well. Pete, with Kai, like where, I guess for you have a senior guy, how does you know an inconsistently like see like that come in sort of at this point in his career, and you know all of those sort of details, I guess yeah. coming together. If I together. could explain <laughs> that, Emily. I'd be doing this via Zoom from Pauly's Island right now and have a boat drink in my hand, all right, and, um, and I'd just be doing some consulting. You know, I'd probably be working for one of those really successful Georgetown grads and, um, and then just doing a little special teams consulting on the side. But, uh, no, like when it comes to the specialists, all right, I know enough – just to be dangerous. You know, I, I get to know each guy. I get to know the nuances of each guy. I get to know what works. You know, Alex Herrera drops a ball on his punt very different than what Kai does. And so you know what works for Kai. You know what works for Alex. And, and you sit there and you watch it with him and you study it with him. Um, 
But I think there's a fine line between coaching them and providing feedback for them, uh, but not micromanaging them either. Um, because, um, you know, every, every one of those guys is a little different and has, has different things that have worked for them. And so you're trying to reinforce the good when you see it and, and try to drill it. Um, and you're going to try to point out um, the things that need to be fixed. Um, I think one of the keys to being a specialist is um, we give them, and this is very purposeful, uh, I give them a lot of time before practice to have a, a pretty thorough warm-up routine without me there. Um, and, and that's, again, um, very well thought out because that's their time to not have me breathing down their neck like I tend to do in practice and put pressure on them in practice to, to perform. I want them to have that alone time to kind of work through uh, any issues that they might be addressing and, and that alone time to kind of mentally prepare for the practice and, and get their bodies ready to go. So, um, you know, and, and again, you got to be careful not to overwork these guys because then the next thing you know, they don't have enough pop in their leg on a Saturday. So, um, you know, there's, there's no, uh, that may not be a totally fair explanation, but, uh, but I will just say there's, there's no panic, you know, from my standpoint, he's going to be just fine. Uh, Pete, two for you. Uh, the first one, you know, Shane came in. Can here. I remember two questions? All right, well, we'll, give it, do... we'll give it a good shot. I've, I've actually have done that on other occasions. So I wasn't going to be the guy that fires like two or three questions at you and you say like, you know, what's that third one? Oh, I'm going to ask <laughs> one question at a okay. time. But the first one is with, with Shane coming in here yesterday, he told us about his foot. As the associate head coach, has there been any discussions about potentially you having any more responsibilities this weekend? I don't know if he's going to be sitting in a chair. I don't think he'll be like Hugh Freeze up in the press box. Yeah, so the first thing I told him was that I recommend sheetrock walls more so than, than you know, solid objects. All right, that's from personal experience. Um, uh, no, I, I don't anticipate any, any other responsibilities. I will say this, um, on the practice field, um, you know, we, we switch spots a lot. Like, and, and he'll pick, all right, I'm going to be down with the offense now and you're with the defense or vice versa. And I kind of just, you know, he runs a lot faster than me. So, and he's in much better shape than me. Not that I'm in bad shape, but he's, he's in better shape than me. So I'll, I'll just spot him, right? And I'll see, all right, okay, he's sprinting over to the defensive field. So I'm going to now sprint, which I don't, again, move that fast, but I'll get over to the, to the opposite field uh, to, to, to help manage that period. Well, he's staying in the same spot a little bit more this week. So I kind of know where he is. He, yeah, he's probably going to stay over there. So it's a little bit, a little bit easier for me to figure out where to go uh, during, during those team periods. But uh, um, no, he, he's, he's a tough guy. He'll, he'll be just fine and a uh, little bit of adversity for him. So, you know, that's, I, I had a player in my office this week that I had a wonderful conversation with a um, guy who's really improving um, and and we were talking a lot about controllables and uncontrollables and and um, you know focusing on the things you can and and not the things that don't matter and all that and and uh, you know we preach that a lot as coaches you know I've been preaching it for um, a lot since I was 31 years old and became a head coach um, and, uh, and and you know preaching it is one thing living it is harder living it is harder and I've struggled at times myself with that so. Um, you know, we all get tested. We all get tested, and uh, and we're all getting tested right now, right? Um, so, but that's that's where we want to be, right? If we're preparing these young men for life after football and life after South Carolina, like staying focused on what matters and the task at hand and controlling what you can control. You know, again, easy to talk about, harder to live it. Like, put this thing away. You know what I mean? Put this away and let's go play ball, right? And and uh, that's that's what I think. And the other question? Oh, yeah, there is a second. Yeah, Come on, let's go. go. The other the other question for you. Uh, Shane mentioned yesterday that Stone Bland he's been a little banged up, yeah. and the thought process sometimes when you're talking about who that next linebacker could be, it depends maybe on special teams and what, how much they can impact. How much of a say and what's the process from your perspective when you're trying to help out in terms of figuring out, okay, yeah. this guy, that guy, not just from a defensive standpoint, but it could be offense as well if someone is banged up. Absolutely. So uh, I get 
very involved, whether it's just me looking at everything or whether it's in a staff meeting or it's popping in with the defensive staff or the offensive staff uh, with, with the personnel and um, take a lot of pride in knowing every single guy on the roster and where we're at. And I'm constantly asking questions about how things are evolving uh, at certain positions, who's playing more, who's playing less. Obviously, the injuries are, are critical uh, because you're, you're trying to put together you know, the best package across all of your units that you can. And you certainly don't want to start investing reps in somebody who may not even travel. Um, you, you understand there's a trickle down effect. You know, I've said in here numerous times because I like to wear out things, but about trickle down economics and Ronald Reagan, right? Well, if, if one linebacker's out and that means another linebacker is going to play 30 or 40 snaps in the game on defense, well, then how does that affect special teams? Maybe that guy was playing on three units last week and now he can only play on one or two units. So I'm very much aware of that, very much in tune to that. And, uh, and there's obviously a, a, a trickle-down effect um, to those things. You might be playing a team that runs more spread sets, and so now you're going to be using more defensive backs. And, okay, somebody's playing a lot in this game that, that didn't play last week and, or maybe the other way around. So those things are always going to impact – my thinking in terms of who we're going to use, it might even impact some of the things we've got to do schematically on special teams because of who's available. You know, you, you don't ever want to ask somebody to do something they can't physically do in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. So um, those, those things are always right up through the end of the week uh, a factor for sure. Okay, outstanding. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Where's home? Phoenix. Okay. Good yeah. stuff. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Outstanding. Very far. Um, you, you mentioned it a bunch of, like, this team's going through adversity right now. And I'm sure you've been on a, a lot of teams that have gone through adversity in the midseason. What are the traits that the teams who get through it well, what, what traits do they have? Yeah, they don't blink. They don't flinch. Um. You know, I've been I've been blessed. Uh, I was thinking about this on my drive in early this morning. Uh, how many different programs that I've been a part of where a team won nine, 10, 11, 12 games, right? But I think back to certain teams at certain places. I'll give you one example. My last year at Elon University, 2010, was a six and five team. That probably doesn't make anybody think, oh wow. A six and five team. In fact, a year before we had a record number nine wins, went to the playoffs for the first time. Everything was great. But that six and five team started off two and four with a really tough schedule, really tough schedule, and a bunch of injuries and different things, but they never blinked, they never flinched, um, and they stuck together. It had really good leadership. And, you know, we beat a nationally ranked Chattanooga team down the stretch. We beat a really good Furman team down the stretch. Um, you know, we scored 60-something points in our last game against Western Carolina. Like, every guy on the bench got in the game uh, on, on, the, on the last game of the season. And I'll always remember that team fondly just because, you know, the truth is that was probably their potential that year based on all of these other factors, some of which they couldn't control. They couldn't control that App State had another national championship type team that year. They couldn't control, um, you know, some of the other things that, that how Richmond had a really good team that year. We got beaten overtime by them. You know what I mean? So, but they, they just stayed the course, you know, and that was a credit to them, the leadership. That was a credit to those assistant coaches, uh, that did such a fabulous job that, um, you know, many of those guys are now coaching in different Power 5 schools and so forth. So that's what stands out to me. All right. Thanks so much, everybody.